squares in this dimension over here. Okay, now if I you know if I look at it and I, I want to approach the problem now, I need to somehow link the figure number, which in this case is actually the n term if you interpret it correctly, though we start with n equals to zero. Okay. I need to find how to link this shape over here, okay? So, you know, if I were to think about it, okay, I can see that, you know, how, how about if I think of it as a square first? Because if I think of it as a square, I can find the number of small squares that make up the square. Hence, I can find the area of the big square, okay? So, if I were to just visualize that there's a square over here, a big square, if you wish, for every of the shape, you know, figure hundreds over here, then possibly I can find the area of the big square. Okay, well that's not going to be a problem because you can see that the size is going to be quite unison. Now figure the size is 3. For figure 2, the size is going to be 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? Okay, so I will just immediately write, um, okay, let's just say sides of big square equals to 2 will be 5. So it looks like it's going to be 2n plus 1. Okay? Hence the area, area of big square is going to be equal to 2n plus 1 squared. Okay, the units, let's just leave it at one side, but the units is the number of small squares, which is what we're trying to find. Okay, so now if we got the area of the big square, we somehow need to get the area of the diamond, right? Now to look at it, uh, intuitively, you can see that it's by subtracting the sides at the top left, uh, bottom top left and top uh, left and right. Bottom, sorry, bottom left and right, top left and right. Okay? And to get the number of the small squares, we can kind of get it quite easily because, okay, you can see that the four sides are the same. Okay? For consistency, I'll just draw it here and here. Okay? You can see that the four sides are the same. One, two, three, one, two, three. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, 1. So let's just kind of isolate just the, the, top, the top side that we need to subtract. Because after that, we can multiply by 4 and subtract from the, the big square which we got here. Progress so far, that's good. Now, I will draw the, the third one, okay? Figure 3, the third one is going to be like that. Um, not a space, so I'll just draw it like that. Okay, so now if we want to look at it, it kind of seems that it's forming some sort of um, C, um, sequence, right? Now, one, okay, so um, the sequence is one, three, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, number of, number, uh, number of top squares, let's just call it as that. Okay, one, three, six. Now, a pattern doesn't seem to be forming just yet, but it doesn't matter. Let's just look at it carefully. 1 to 3 is plus 2. Now, this one is 0. Okay, sorry. This one is 0. I forgot to write. Okay, plus 1. This one is plus 3. Now, we're on to something. This is going to be plus 4. Okay, now we're certainly on to something because, you see, the number of top squares is, is a sequence. We don't know what, what's the common difference or what's the, the summation, but we're not concerned about that because we're concerned about finding the n equals to 100 term here. Okay? Now, if we can solve this, we can solve, get the area of the small squares and then get the, the big area. So, we just look at this. 0, 1, 3, 6, uh, 10. Okay, now, not, not, no clear connection yet, but then if we look at the difference, not the common difference, the difference, it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So, the, the difference of this sequence follows an arithmetic progression. Does that make sense? Follows an arithmetic progression. The difference follows an arithmetic progression. So, and for, and for the arithmetic progression, which is this here, the arithmetic progression, let's just say, okay, follows, has a common difference because it's arithmetic progression. And if we sum this up, it seems to me that we're going to get the difference from zero to the hundred term here. The difference, okay? So meaning to say that we just have to sum this up of the arithmetic progression to get the term that we want. The term that we want, okay? I say again, the, the difference of the, the sequence that we have in hand is not common, it's not a common difference. However, the that difference follows an arithmetic progression, in which case there is a common difference, which is one. Okay. So um, 
it will be from zero sum all the way up to the hundred term here. Okay, so to see to get here it's zero plus one. To get here is zero plus one plus plus two to get here. So to get here it's gonna be zero plus one plus two plus three plus four all the way to plus hundred. Why? Well I can just see here the sorry, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's gonna be like that um, hundred times. Okay, why? Well, because you see, the uh, difference is one is to the first term, uh, two, two times, two terms to the second term. So it's going to be 100 times to the 100 term. So this whole thing here, if we were to write it, it's going to be like that. Okay, and as you all know, we will take the sum, and it's going to be equal to, which is going to be 100, it's going to be um, A plus B over 2 and n minus 1 okay now a is going to be 1 and the d is going to be 1 here so it's going to be it's going to be reduced to um, half okay which is 1 again uh, sorry okay the it's 100 so sorry um, okay 100 n plus half n n take away 1 and let's just leave it as that. Okay. So, actually, should we simplify a bit? Okay, let's just simplify it. Um, and, okay, I'll bring out the n because the n is common. Okay, plus, then I'm going to times this in, so it's going to be um, plus, yeah, plus n over 2, take away like that, which is then equal to. Um, Bring down the two here. Take away is gonna be half n plus one, n plus one, n. Okay, that looks much nicer. Okay, so okay, and this one over here is gonna be let's just say capital N, the n term of this sequence here, which corresponds to the area of one side of the triangle, one corner of the triangle. Okay, so now we can immediately go to the figure that we want. Okay, knowing that this is gonna be that one there. Okay, so if we want to figure 100, which is this one here, we'll just call it a n. Okay, okay, we'll just take note of this. Okay, so we want this one here, right? So it's going to be a n equals to the whole, the sum of the whole area. Sorry, the whole area in small squares, which is over here, 2 n plus 1 squared, and then we take away four of the corners, right? Which is going to be four times this. There we go. Okay, so what is n now? Okay, well, I can just look at it, the n is going to be equal to 100, because 100 corresponds to the area over here, and it's very nice that 100 also corresponds to this over here, as we showed you just now, that to get the 100 term, we need to, you know, sum the common difference, the arithmetic uh, progression, which is the common difference, um, 100 times. Just rewind the video and you know what I mean. Okay, so now we just put 100 inside. Um, so it's A100 goes to um, 100, which is 201 squared, take away 200, 100, and. Okay, then if I let me take my calculator, should be correct. Square, take away 2 times 100 times 101. Yes, okay. 2201. There we go. Okay, so this is the area of the diamond shape thing over here. And how we got it? Well, we just had to look at a way to link the n term with the, the, area, with the area here. And how, how we did that was that we find the big area, which was easy because we can get the sides easily. And then we were to find the area of one corner here, which turns out to be a sequence, which the difference of the sequence is an arithmetic progression. So if we sum up the differences, we will get the nth term, the a term, yeah, the n term here, if we sum up the differences, okay? We didn't sum up this, though it's going to be quite difficult, um, but we summed up the difference, because the difference follows an arithmetic progression to get the nth term, okay? Because it's zero plus the difference to get this. Okay, so that's one way to solve it.